Can an absence ever stop aching? 17 years ago, a young girl named Madeline McCann disappeared. And ever since, her absence has echoed in the hearts of her parents, Kate and Jerry McCann. The pain of their loss they recently shared on the official Find Madeline website still aches, even as life has moved forward in so many other ways. It all began on a seemingly ordinary day, May 3rd, 2007. The McCann family was on holiday in Praia de Luz, Portugal. Madeleine, only three years old then, and her younger twin siblings, were left asleep in their apartment while their parents went out to dinner with friends nearby. But when they returned, Madeleine was gone. Fast forward to the present, this month is significant, not only marking the 17th year of Madeleine's disappearance, but also what should have been her 21st birthday. The search for Madeleine has been relentless. Just recently, it was confirmed that the Home Office granted an additional £192,000 for the Scotland Yard investigation into Madeline's disappearance under Operation Grange. This brings the total spent by the Metropolitan Police on this high-profile case to a staggering £13.2 million as of March this year. However, this intense focus on Madeline's case has drawn criticism. In 2017, Matthew Wright claimed that parents of other missing children have been shortchanged by the UK government, highlighting the stark contrast between the millions poured into Madeline's case and the mere 2,500 pounds allocated to other missing children. The case grew more intricate when in 2012, the Policia Judiciaria suggested a chilling theory that Madeline may have died from an accidental drugs overdose and that her parents both doctors covered up the death to protect their careers. This theory arose following the analysis of forensic evidence gathered from inside the family's apartment and from a hire car rented 25 days after Madeline's disappearance. Notably, tiny traces of blood were found in the McCann Holiday apartment at the Ocean Club. These traces, invisible to the naked eye, were discovered at a low height on the bedroom wall. Specially trained Cocker Spaniel sniffer dogs, capable of detecting blood up to seven years old, pinpointed this area of the bedroom for further investigation, adding another layer to the mystery of Madeline's case. Despite these allegations, the McCanns have continued to express their hope and gratitude for the ongoing support they receive in the search for Madeline. They have also stated their willingness to take lie detector tests, although they have yet to do so. But, you know, we've tried to remain very positive in our outlook. And even small levels of criticism make that hard when you're trying to do everything in your power to get your daughter back. I know you've been very supportive of the Portuguese police investigation. But is there anything that you feel could have been done better, particularly in those crucial first, first 24 hours when, when Madeleine was missing and perhaps it was treated as a, a simple missing child as opposed to an abduction? I think... Um, you know, we are not looking at what has been done and I don't think it helps at this stage to look back at what could and couldn't have been done. I think it's fair to say we expected a very British style response that you would expect if you were in a big metropolitan city. But you have to put it in context that we're in a tiny resort but you know that aside um, we, the times for these lessons to be learned will be after the investigation is finished and not now. You know, it's an ongoing investigation which has huge resources both from Portuguese and the British. They're working very, very closely with lots of expert help and I know there's hundreds of pieces of information continuing to come forward and I would strongly like to emphasise we would like anyone who's been in here in the two weeks leading up to the abduction to come forward if they have not already done so and upload their photographs because we want Madeline back and people can still influence that. Looking back, I mean, did you see anything suspicious in the days leading up to her abduction? Did you notice anything? Have you been racking your brains to try to, to think whether people might have been watching? We didn't. If we did, we wouldn't tell you yeah. because it may be important information, but we didn't, you know. It was such a relaxing holiday and in fact as a family unit up until that night and with the friends we were here, certainly for us, it was as good a holiday as we have had with the children up until that point. 
you have to keep believing that Madeline is still going to be found alive and well. Absolutely. And do, do, you, do you ever, though, allow yourself to, to drift towards negative thoughts? I think in the early days we did, and I think that's inevitable. I think any parent who's been through this does that, certainly in the first few days. We don't now. We're actually um, a lot stronger, a lot more hopeful now. And we have to be hopeful. It's what keeps us going and keeps us focused. And what about Sean and Emily? What have you said to them about their big sister? They're really good. I mean, they're at an age, really, where they're, they're still quite young. And I guess it hasn't had the same impact on them as if they were a little bit older. They do talk about Madeline. Um, they pick up things and say Madeline's, you know, uh, and, and that's fine. But they're, they're really good. I think that's, you know, something that is many people have said to us that this is a parent's worst nightmare and it is it truly is and it's as bad as you can possibly imagine but you know if all three of the children had been taken it could have been even worse than your worst nightmare and we've got to be strong for them you know they're here um, they do bring you back to earth and we cannot you know grieve one we did grieve of course we grieve but ultimately we need to be in control so that we can influence and help in any way possible. Not just Sean and Amelie, but the investigation. And because of them, the day may come when you have to leave here and go back to the UK. I know you've got no plans to do so at the moment, but how do you think you're gonna feel if that, that day comes and you have to go to the airport and fly back? I can't think about that, Ian, to be honest. I can't think about going home without Madeline. So. I notice you've got um, Madeline's cuddly toy with you as always. Mm. How did that start and, and what comfort does it bring you? Where did it come from? Or? No, how did the idea come to just have it in your hands all the, all the time? Well, it's something that Madeline has with her every night. And if she's upset or not well, then she has cuddle cat. Mm. And so it provided me with a little bit of comfort. It's something of Madeline close to me. This is International Missing Children's Day. I mean, I guess Madeline's had more publicity than just about every missing child in the world put together. I'm sure you're very grateful for, for, for that. Why do you think it has provoked such enormous public support, of which I don't think we've ever seen before? I think there's a conglomeration of circumstances that have come together in this situation. The fact that we're on holiday, um, very safe resort, recognised for that. And of course, the, the world has changed in terms of information technology and the speed of response, you know, in terms of the media coming here and us being prepared um, to some extent use that to try and influence the campaign. But above all else, it's touched everyone. Everyone, you don't have to be a parent for this to have a major impact on you. And I think it's also been very very important and s some of the things which we did we have done and said which we didn't realize what impact they would have but so many thousands of people are doing small things to help us find Madeline because the worst feeling was helplessness the absolute worst that we had no bearing on finding her but once you start to do that then you start to feel a bit better and I hope we're going to look back at the end of all this and say that we have done everything in our power, but also that other people are helping in so many other ways and they feel that they are part of it. Does it worry you that people might start to lose interest as, as time goes on, the media coverage diminishes inevitably? For me, um, we know that the media coverage is not going to last a long time. It's lasted much longer and we have been much, much more successful in driving our message out than we could ever possibly have imagined. Personally, I think it's gone beyond that at the minute and that there is a feeling with many, many people out there that they will not allow this to happen. And we know that and we pray that it doesn't happen again, but when it does, the speed of the next response and the template we have set will alter it. And there has been so much goodwill and humanity out there that it really has restored that one evil act actually has resulted in so much good. Where do you go from here? There's talk of travelling around Europe. Have you got any firm plans as yet? We haven't got any firm plans. We're likely to travel in a few places in Europe. Um, but as yet, no, no definite plans. But you've got no plans to go back to the UK for the foreseeable future? No. 
I think that everybody has just been incredibly impressed with, with you as a couple and how you've, you've dealt with this. There was a, a period after a week or so where you, you, you looked as if you were almost broken and who could, for, who could uh, not understand that. And then there seemed to be a sort of a strength come from somewhere. Um, is, is that a fair point? Is that what happened and what brought that about? I think that's definitely true, isn't it? Um. Certainly, you know, at the end of that first week, there was so much emotion that we had spent and we actually had a period where we discussed this openly that we felt devoid, completely devoid of emotion. And the analogy that I like to use is a bit like when we were students and you got to your overdraft limit and you'd gone beyond it and there was just nothing left in the tank. Um, I also, I think physically and mentally were shattered. Um, but, you know, as you gradually get more on an even keel, we started to get back into the black. And we'd also worked tirelessly behind the scenes to put support mechanisms in place, including our legal team, the response with the fund, which was really driven by offers rather than us thinking that we needed it. And once these were in place, then it helped us to focus on what we really needed to focus on. Well, everyone who's watching, who's been following Madeline's case over the past three weeks, just wishes you all the best. Thanks very much, Jerry. Thanks very Thanks much. Thanks very much. Thank you. For me, um, we know that media coverage is not going to last a long time. It's lasted much longer and we have been much, much more successful in driving our message out than we could ever possibly have imagined. Personally, Personally, I think, I think it's, it's going, going beyond, beyond that, that in a minute. minute.